Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, like Daniela, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and to be speaking about one of the projects that I have led uh, over the last couple of, uh, of years. Um, the, the title of the project or of, uh, of the presentation is, is, is Bridging the, the Last Mile. And this is basically a metaphor that is increasingly, let's say, let's say, let's say used in, in weather services. Um, and it comes actually from, from, from logistics, right? Where there, there is the, I the idea that actually the, the last mile uh, in, in getting the packages and getting the post to the people is actually the most expensive, the, the, like the hardest and uh, the most complex, let's say, let's, say, let's say part of the whole value chain in, involved. And in many ways we see something similar, of course, in the, in, in the topics that we are talking about here. Um, as I mentioned, I will be talking about the, the Saliencies project and actually about two examples of, of, of research in which we have been trying to understand some of these challenges in the last mile. Um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, also ways in which we have been trying to, to bridge and have been trying to over, overcome uh, uh, yeah, together with different, with, with different researchers from, from different disciplines, but, but also end users. Uh, and different sectors. First of all, on user needs. Huh? So we have already heard a lot about this, uh, but very, very broadly speaking, you, yeah, you could say that there's all kinds of, yeah, all kinds of challenges uh, in the, um, in the way that actually, well, the information from the different inf information systems uh, uh, in, in trying to reach those users and. Yeah, there are three different reasons you can say, uh, according to to uh, to Zulkafli. First one is related to to uh, to a useful 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 uh, useful uh, NAS. Uh, so, uh, to what extent are, peop are people able to use this information? Let's say actually in their decision making. The second relates to usability. Uh, so, uh, is this information is this information is, is the interactive in, in yeah, like in like in like in like in like intuitive, for example, we already heard many examples of that. And secondly, is also of course about access. Eh? Is this information tran transferable? Uh, I'm sure there like there are more, but those are already three really important different yeah, dimensions that we should look at. That it's not uh, a one-dimensional or a, or a linear, uh, let's say, relation that we are, uh, 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 that we are talking about. Very useful also from the climate services let's say field are our insights about this 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 uh, this, uh, this uh, usability gap uh, whereby there are, there are barriers I like uh, like identified related to the to uh, the fit the interplay and also interaction and and you can see that there, there are all kinds of factors there um, that I will not go into all of them but it it relates to more more technical issues but also uh, all kinds of well, societal and social and, and economic issues, factors. Um, and also opportunities from that field to maybe overcome some of these barriers uh, related to um, uh, s some of these things that you see there also in the bottom of, of uh, for example, a trust is really important, for example. Huh? So we can, uh, there can be an accurate product, it can be there in the right uh, in, the, in the right place at the, at the right time, but still there has to be also a trust in the provider, for example. Uh, so when you start looking and when you start um, um, when you start um, um, unpacking these last mile issues, they are very well, very diverse, so to say, and they require uh, for that reason yeah, more research in order to find out what is really key. One example in which we have been trying to unpack that a little bit for, um, uh, for, uh, for uh, let's say, the, the, the weather, ice, uh, uh, and, and climate services in the Arctic, in, in a project that we, like, uh, that we did, is, is run a survey in which we wanted to understand how different users and, pro and, and providers are thinking about a range of issues uh, that, that, like, that I just mentioned. Uh, what are the factors that would stimulate the uptake of innovative services and uh, of, and, uh, of, uh, of uh, innovative products. And we, we ran uh, a, like a small survey, not with a very large uh, sample, but that was also not necessary to do a consensus analysis th that was focused on trying to calculate, trying to, to map the, the, like the level 
of um, agreement that there actually is within those different user and provider groups, right? And here you see uh, some things that are important is that it's very experienced people that we are typically talking about in these categories. Something that's also interesting is, yeah, where do they work? Um, we were focusing like a lot on shipping sectors. Huh? So here you see, for example, tourism um, uh, and also other, other shipping sectors. Um, uh, and also where they worked, our, our, uh, our survey was focused a lot on the European Arctic. Uh, we had a specific interest uh, in that. And here you see a first picture of an outcome of this consensus around it. What was really interesting, what we found was that, that actually, well, self-reported, uh, let's say, providership or, or usership, um, uh, despite that, it seemed that um, that there was a large, a large agreement on many of the issues that we, that, that we talked about. Um, uh, yeah, and, this, and this kind of, you, you could say, illustrates a point that we already made a couple of times uh, at, at the summit, namely that maybe this difference isn't so important, this difference between providers and users. Maybe everybody is a user and a, and a provider at, at the same time. Uh, it basically means that th there is, uh, let's say, in th that there is inter interaction uh, in the field between these different groups, um, and because of the experience, the level of, of, of experience that at least the current generation of users has, uh, th there's also a largely an agreement, a consensus on what is in what is important uh, in this last mile delivery. Here you see of, well, a table, um, an example of the table in which yeah, you could see that for different issues, I will go into, into some examples uh, quickly, uh, yeah, and you see that, uh, well, a cross means, a red cross is that there is disagreement and, and, and well, a consensus on that, a blue thing uh, here, we say in Dutch, means that there's agreement. Um, just a couple of examples there then. Um, there was one issue, or there were actually two issues where there was no consensus about. And that was, of course, a very in, 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 interesting starting point. Uh, there, was, there was, first of all, no consensus about whether users would be willing or able to pay for high-quality products. Uh, according to providers, users would not be willing, but according to the users, uh, the, uh, like the user group, they would be willing. Uh, so. This kind of illustrates that, that what, let's say, good quality services, they are valued a lot by users. Secondly, there was no agreement, no consensus on um, um, uh, yeah, whether a new project, uh, a, a new product would be more likely to be adopted by, by users if it discloses underlying uncertainty. So this issue of, yeah, let's say, complex products with probabilities, with uncertainties, um, um, and, 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 well, the extent to, to which users would be interested in that. According to the providers, um, um, uh, uh, they would, um, I'm saying it right now, yeah, there would be difficulty with that, but again, the users, uh, they are very interested in any type of, of product, really, and are actually very open uh, for that. A number of other findings, and then we don't have to look uh, at the table, because there's really a lot in there, is let's say, for example, that products from public entities are trusted, are trusted more by users than those offered by private uh, uh, providers. There was consensus on that. That's the products that have been have been co have been co-produced with users are, 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 are trusted more than those who are not not co-produced. Also a very important insight, of course. Users are more likely to trust those products when recommended by peers and colleagues, right? I think the example in the, in the presentation of Karen Strand this morning, when there is recommendation on certain, uh, on certain, certain, certain products also speaks uh, to that. And, well, currently available products do not meet um, a level of quality required by users. Um, um, is this, maybe I'm, maybe the sentence is not complete, I'm not sure, well, well users are capable of understanding of, let's say, automated products. Uh, a very important part of our, our, our survey was also looking into next trends, for, for example, the production of automated products, where we might be losing a very important human component, dimension, and 
the extent to which uh, there's concern about, uh, about that. Um, it said, well, that actually users would be capable of understanding all kinds of products, including those. Um, and that automation will continue to need a human involvement because users are not ready to trust fully automated products. Right? So there's always room for people involved, uh, uh, for intermediaries, so to say, uh, who can explain and who can, uh, yeah, who, uh, yeah, who can, um, who can help train the, uh, also also users in these new types of uh, of, of, of products. It was mentioned already, and that's the second example. Uh, that um, that co-production was really was really important. Now, in the in the Salient Seas project, this was an example of a survey that we did, uh, but we've also had a very very iterative process uh, in the sense that we started with a group of, of end users exploring what is, what, is, what, is, what is important. Several people are in the room today here. Um, and we did all kinds of, yeah, well, surveys, uh, also spatially explicit, let's say, surveys and exercises where issues are uh, at stake. Uh, scenario exercises as well of where things might, are, are going in the future. And also the development of all kinds of, of demonstration products based on some of the feedback given uh, uh, by, uh, by stakeholders uh, at the start of the, of the project. So it was really over the, over the course of a couple of years coming back to, the, to this group of stakeholders uh, uh, each time and trying to improve and understand better uh, uh, what, what is going on. And um, like, and like just an example, this, this, we did this in very, well, direct and simple ways, you could say, eh? like, like a demonstration products developed by, by Matt Norway here in the top left uh, and by DMI in the, in, the, in the top right. And just simple, because at the time it was already COVID uh, conditions, simple online meetings where these products are discussed and where people could give feedback so that they could be further improved. Eh? maybe the regular way in which often, in often feedback is uh, sought for and provided, to more, more sophisticated ways in which we wanted to really put, uh, let's say, users in a decision-making context in trying out some, some new products. In this case, it was a, a, uh, like, like a sub-seasonal forecasting services of sea ice, uh, let's say, based on the ECMWF uh, forecasts. Uh, that we brought into a serious game approach uh, that was called IceWise, in which we brought people into a, a decision-making context where they had to run a particular itinerary, uh, like in Svalbard or in, or in Greenland, and we would be feeding them with these forecasts in, the, in, in an attempt to see what difference this, this, well, this forecast would make, this longer-term forecast made. Uh, and that's, that is interesting because yeah, let's say, let's, let's say users are not used to getting such a sub-seasonal forecast for sea ice. That is a completely new thing. Uh, and uh, this was an, well, an, an, uh, yeah, like a way of testing a little bit of what it would do, uh, and testing a little bit what kind of, yeah, let's say, impact it would have on their decision making. So this was not only about playing games, uh, but also actually very much about learning in which debriefing sessions uh, so gaming takes one and a half hours, debriefing takes another two hours in such a, in such a session. And you can see really intense, uh, let's say, sessions with, well, a major, let's say, input from some of the stakeholders that we were working with. Uh, and we are, of course, really, really grateful for some of the feedback uh, that we got uh, in, those, uh, in those sessions. Finally, that's the conclusion. Um, we think that uh, yeah, in, in the Salient Seas project, by doing things sometimes slightly different, by having these participatory methods, we have generated a wealth of knowledge uh, important for bridging the last mile. Um, we found it really interesting that actually users and producers seem to largely agree on what is important, on how trust can be built, etc. So there's a lot of <coughs> potential to move forward. Um, and some of the key factors you see here, like producer, like, like, like reputation, trial periods are important, peer recommendation, etc. Et um, so we really think that also forms of co-production, and then I mean more project-based or more institutional forms of co-production in which there's a much longer re re like a relationship uh, between service, service providers and users uh, can, can play a really in, in, like important role going forward. Thank you very much.
Like there are two publications that are already almost, yeah, well, one published and the other one is coming in which you can read more, more details, more numbers. I know many people like numbers. So, good. Thank you, Mariel. That was fascinating. We may have time for one quick question, if there is one. Yes, Peter. Do you want to use a... knowing which way you was approaching the problem to identify the producer and the stakeholder and the users that you mm, use it for your uh, project in which which was the um, approach, the approach to select yeah yeah well, well we, we had of course a, a, a particular focus on, 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 on like on shipping sectors in the European Arctic so that already narrowed down uh, the scope and we uh, yeah, you could say we made use of stakeholders that we that we brought in. We knew that also the med services brought in. So that kind of determined a little bit. We wanted to have a well, a diverse group of, uh, for example, of cargo shipping, of uh, of cruise shipping, of expedition cruising, pilot services, um, let's say fisheries. So that we had a had like a mix of people around like around the table. Thank you again, Mariel. Good. Let's say thank you.